working parents of two-year-olds are now entitled to 15 hours of free childcare. However, Labour has accused the Conservatives of having a childcare pledge without a plan, saying they do not believe the necessary spaces will be available. Joining me now to discuss this is former advisor to the policy unit at number 10 and chairman of the Campaign for Real Education, Chris McGovern. Chris, on, on the surface, this seems like a great day for parents of young children. Well, it's a good day in many respects because, you know, the, those early years are the most important years in a child's life. As a head teacher, when I spoke to parents, I used to say to them not to worry so much about A-levels and GCSEs or even SATs. The most important year in the school is the year one. And of course, I could have said it's actually earlier than that. So the government are doing the right thing. The initiative is correct. You need to put your resources into young children and the younger as possible. Whether we have, in fact, got enough places is another question we shall find out. But what I would say, Dana, is that uh, it's not often mentioned this, but we spend more per head on education in this country than almost any other country in the world. Mm -hmm. And we actually increased expenditure since the 1950s by 900 percent in real terms. We have to shift some of the money into early years. In, in, in schools these days, the majority of staff are not teachers. So if we could shift some of the money into, into the early years, which would be a good thing, then perhaps there would be the places and the money. And can I just also say that the one person who has spoken up on this, and very intelligently, actually, is, is the Princess of Wales. Mm -hmm. uh, she's the person who said, you know, you've got to look after those young children. So the whole education system is really based for its success on getting it right with those young children. So well done to the government in, in, putting the, in, in saying we've got to go along this pathway. But we must take note of what Labour say. There may not be the resources at the moment it may to shift them around a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, the government, of course, has also increased the hourly rate, which they're hoping will also help to, to create more places. But do you think it will happen? Do you think there will be nurseries expanding or new ones opening up to really fill this demand? Well, look, nurseries are saying they're under great pressure, and if it's anything, they're, they're cutting back slightly. Uh, we have a new minimum wage coming in, of course. Mm -hmm. I think the problem is, you know, Dana, that, that nursery education is seen as some sort of Cinderella area. It's, it's the most, as I say, it's the most important years in a child's life. Our economy will be based on how these young children do in 20, 30 years' time. It's going to take a long time, but we have to get it right in the youngest years. So will there be enough places? Well, if there aren't, will there be enough money? to make the places available. If there isn't, we've got to shift the resources. And we can do that by actually taking money away from schools and reducing the support staff in schools and pushing it into early years. That's the hard lesson we've got to learn. And we've got to do that because we have no choice about this. We have to support young children. They're the most important of all. Well, I'd be interested to see what, what the kind of school head teachers would, would say on that front, Chris. But I'm, I'm keen to pick your brains on something that's often touted as a bit of a silver bullet, which is changing the childcare ratios. Obviously, in other countries, the, the ratios of numbers of children per, per adult um, are a little bit higher. Do you think that would help alleviate some of the pressure? Well, it's, it's not easy when you've got young children. You do need, I mean, I think it's going to rise, rise of one in five uh, for two-year-olds from one in four. You know, what's not often said in this whole story, Dana, is that the best people to look after the children, of course, are the parents. Mm. And how much benefit there would be to society if we could support families so that mum or dad could spend more time with their children. Because at the end of the day, what we're talking about here is getting nine-month-year-old children into care. And those carers may or may not be good at the job. We, what we really need to do is to support families, to support parents, so that one of the parents can spend more time with their children. That's actually done in Scandinavia quite successfully. We do it to some extent here. Obviously, we have parental leave and so forth, but I would love to see Labour and Tory and all parties saying, look, I know we've got an economy to fix, but also we've got to look after these young children because our future economy will depend on these children becoming responsible, hardworking adults. We've got to do that. So if I had a solution at all, I would say, support parents so they can stay at home a bit longer because that's what's really going to benefit children. Mm -hmm. Well, Chris, let, let's talk about the slightly older children because we were, we were touching earlier on a story about uh, young people and social media addiction. Are, are you seeing that as an increasing problem? Been a problem for years. Our campaign for real education has been mentioned this for 20 years. You know, what's really interesting is that if you go to California, where the, many of these big social media companies, technical companies, uh, they actually live and they, and they work. And, and the, the multi-billionaires parents of the, uh, who are running those companies, they're increasingly sending their own children to what are called Waldorf schools. 
There's schools which ban the technology. Mm. So if the person who is producing the, the media sites and the, and the technology is banning it for their own children, you have to ask a few questions about the damage that they know the damage it causes to young children. It's an epidemic. It's educational cocaine at best. Children are addicted to it. As a, as a head teacher, I banned the, the mobile phones in the classroom many years ago. Mm -hmm. We've got to be really hard on this, and we're far too indulgent with children. We've got to say no, and I would support those politicians who are saying, look, maybe by the age of 16 they're going to have a phone, but before that, no. We've got to be strict, we've got to be taking responsibility. It's a very, very serious issue, and it's causing massive unhappiness in schools. Why do we want to make our children so unhappy? by giving them these mobile phones. It's madness. Mm, definite food for thought there, Chris. That's Chris McGovern, the uh, chairman, I should say, of the campaign for real education.